entered a place of praise, a place of purpose, a place of progress. Hi, my name is Nakia. I'm the ministry director here at Victory and Praise Church. Yeah, as you know, we are a place of praise, purpose, and progress. So I'm actually excited that I get to come to you with a great opportunity. We have a workshop called Equip to Serve in God's Kingdom. Mm -hmm. um, this workshop will ignite your passion to serve in a manner that leaves you fulfilled using your gifts. Mm -hmm. This workshop is on June 4th from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. Amen. I'm Sister Michelle McDaniel. God has given me this material to share with each of you who will be in attendance. I'm super excited because God is going to share with you some gifts that he has placed within you, Thank you not God. just for your use, but for the building of his kingdom. He wants to get the glory out of your trials, out of your um, challenges of life, but he wants you to know that the best is put inside of you for the building of his kingdom. So we want you to come out and discover what your best is and how to utilize that in an effective way to work towards service, but more importantly, to give God glory oh, yes. out of the things that you have gone through. Woo! Can somebody say super stoked? I am so psyched about this course that's coming up. I'm Pastor Trina Turner, staff pastor here at Victory and Praise Church, and I've got to tell you that Oh my goodness, this particular workshop, it's not just lecture style. Mm -hmm. It is chock full of information that you need. Mm -hmm. There is um, interactive lessons. There's worship that's going to take place. Mm -hmm. There's lunch that's going to take place. Mm -hmm. So listen, on Saturday, June 4th from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m., there is no place else in the world that mm -hmm. you would want to be mm -hmm. than at this particular workshop. Mm -hmm. But guess what? There is a registration fee right? Mm -hmm. And I tell you, anything that you value, you don't mind spending money on. Right. But don't worry, this isn't like $99.99. Mm -hmm. This particular registration has a fee that was set so that everybody can participate. Mm -hmm. $15. That's it. it includes the workshop, the material, it includes lunch. I hear it includes t-shirts. $15. And if you grab a partner, it's $15 for one and we got a two for deal. Two for $20. Two for $20. For 20. You cannot beat it. Mm -hmm. So victory and praise. Don't miss out. Make sure you register so that we can properly prepare for your arrival for this Equip to Serve class. I'm Pastor Trina Turner. So I'm Nakia Breckenridge. I'm Michelle McDaniel. And listen, Equip to, to Serve. serve. We'll, we'll see, see you there. there. I'm Elder Emeritus Mother Cheryl George Gibson, and I'm here to teach this week's Bible study lesson, and it's about healing across the distance. And so I'm super excited. Let's get started. We're coming from John, the fourth chapter, verse 46 through 54, the New Living Translation. So it starts, as he traveled through Galilee, he came to Canaan, where he had turned the water into wine. First miracle. There was a government official in nearby Capernaum whose son was very sick. The 47th verse. When he heard that Jesus had come from Judea to Galilee, he went and begged Jesus to come to Capernaum to heal his son who was about to die. The 48th verse, Jesus asks, will you never believe me unless you see miraculous signs and wonders? 49th verse, the officials pleaded, the official pleaded, Lord, please come now before my little boy dies. The 50th verse, then Jesus told him, go back home. Your son will live. And the man believed, thank you, Jesus. The man believed what Jesus said and started home. 51st verse, while the man was on his way, some of his servants met him with the news. 
news. Don't forget that. That his son was alive and well. 52nd verse. He asked them when the boy had begun to get better. And they replied yesterday afternoon at one o'clock. His fever suddenly disappeared. Hallelujah. The 53rd verse. Then the father realized that that was the very same time Jesus had told him, your son will live. And he and his entire household believed in Jesus. The 54th verse, and this was the second miraculous sign Jesus did in Galilee after coming from Judea. Woo, I'm so excited. Okay. I have a lot of things to say, and I'm going to go back over that a little bit because I want to bring off some things. Because I want to ask you, number one, what distance have you traveled to get to Jesus? Or what distance are you willing to go to meet Jesus? So in the 46th verse, it says he, meaning Jesus, traveled through Galilee, and he, Jesus, came to Canaan, where he, Jesus, turned the water into wine. There was a government. Now, Jesus from Galilee to Canaan was four days travel. And this is significant because I'm getting ready to tell you. I'm going somewhere with this. There was a government official in nearby Capernaum whose son was very sick. And the Bible says unto death. Now, listen to this. When he, now we're not talking about this he right now. We're talking about the nobleman, the government official. When that man heard that Jesus had come from Judea to Galilee. Okay, so I want to talk about hearing something because people cannot believe unless they hear. And so this government official, he heard that Jesus was what? He might've got the word how Jesus turned the water into wine, or he might've heard the Sumerian woman that said, uh, come meet a man that told me everything about himself. Whatever it was, he heard. And so we are not going to be able to get the news about Jesus listening to the 12 o'clock news, the five o'clock news talking about what's ever happening to all of these different places. We can't get that. You're not going to get that faith. You need to hear what other people are saying. Now, another thing I want to say is when you go to the restaurants, don't be talking about what's going on on the seven o'clock news, six o'clock. Talk about what Jesus did for you because we want some people to ear hustle so that they can hear about Jesus and believe. And so, thank you, Jesus. I hope you're feeling good because I'm excited about this part already. There was a government official in nearby Capernaum whose son was very sick unto death, I said. And when he heard that Jesus had come from Judea to Galilee, Jesus traveled four days to get there, a four days journey. And he went and begged Jesus to come to Capernaum to heal his son who was about to die. Now, Jesus asked this, okay? Will you never believe in me unless you see miraculous signs and wonders? And so he's still asking the same question today. Will you believe in him if you never saw a miraculous sign or wonder? Can you just believe because you heard that's what he do? And now you into a rut and a trouble and there is dis-ease, disease, a death, uh, a fatal something going on in your life. Can you believe just by hearing that God can help you? Because that's what needs to happen. Not what's going on in 12 o'clock news, but what's going on in the word of God. What have you heard about Jesus? And so um, I'm at the 58th verse, I believe. Jesus asks, will you never believe in me unless you see miraculous signs and wonders? Can you still believe? So the officials pleaded, Lord, please come. Okay, God, yeah, I heard what you said, but can you just come with me? See, because he had a measure of faith that if he just traveled to get to Jesus, if he could just see Jesus and talk to him himself, he believed that Jesus was going to come with him back to Capernaum, another four days journey back home. But this is what God said. He asked him a question. He didn't answer the question. He asked him a question. And so I'm forming that same question to you today. Will you never believe in Jesus unless you see miraculous signs and wonders? The official pleaded, I said, Lord, please, please, please. I heard what you say, but come heal my son. This is my baby. He's about to die. God wasn't all urgent about that because he stands in and outside of time. God is omnipresent. He is everywhere present at the same time. Hallelujah, Jesus. And so this is what Jesus said. Then Jesus told him, the government official, go back home. Your son will live. 
Now, I pose this question to my kids today. I use them as guinea pigs. God's word is eternal. So when God created the earth and he said, let there be light, I asked the kids, have you ever woke up in the morning and it's dark? No. Every single morning, the light obeys. So when God said that your, your son, uh, go home, your son will live, bam, just like that, because he spoke it. Can you believe God enough for his word? When you hear about it and you, you hear about it through other people because we are overcome by the blood of the lamb and the words of our testimonies, what we say, can you believe that? So then Jesus told him, go back home. I'm keep repeating. Your son will live. And the man believed. At that point, he did believe what Jesus said and started home. Now, after he started home, he ran into the, um, his servants and they told him that his son is well. His son is alive. And he said, at what point did he get better? And they told him at one o'clock yesterday. That was the same time that Jesus said, your son will live. And so then he was so happy. He didn't, now he has the knowledge that Jesus will heal across the distance. I didn't need to go all the way to um, Canaan because God is everywhere. He's at Capernaum. He healed my son. And so he told his whole household and everybody believed God and they were saved. So God sets us up for a blessing. It's not, he heals because that's who he is. He's a miraculous God and he does miracles. He heals because it's not just for you. You had this great problem with your son, but it's for your whole household. It's for everybody. It's even for your enemies because God said he'll prepare the table before you're around in the presence of your enemies. He will bless you. And so that they can hear and so that they can see and so that they can know that God heals across the distance. Amen. Thank you for joining us for this week's small group discussion. If you are not a member of a Victory and Praise small group, now is the time to join. Go to www.victoryandpraise.org, click the small groups link, and contact the leader of the small group you would like to join. We invite you to join us every Sunday at 9 a.m. in person at 2029 East Harding Way in Stockton or online via our Facebook or YouTube channels. God bless.